and thank you for watching today's unboxing video. I'm Sergio with Mobility Scooters Direct, and today we're unboxing and assembling a Pride Mobility Go Chair Travel Power Wheelchair. All you'll need is a pair of scissors to get started. As you can see, there are some straps. Simply cut them out, and you'll see the user manual at the very top as soon as you open the box. Make sure to keep your user manual, read through it entirely, and you're going to find a few necessary items such as zip ties and an allen key which you'll want to keep handy. Do not throw that away. Once you remove the top styrofoam you'll see that the battery charger is located there and you'll see the seat post which is saran wrapped pretty tightly. Seat post is going to hold the seat in place. Just next to the seat post you'll find the joystick which is also wrapped in plastic. We're going to put that off to the side here and show you how we can go ahead and continue to unbox everything and get it out of the box making sure we don't leave anything behind. It's important to keep your box for at least five days in case you want to return your product. Once you have everything out, you can go ahead and grab the seat as shown here, lift it straight up and put it to the side. You'll find the armrests on the sides of the box after removing the seat. Simply remove them, put them to the side, and then you can begin removing the excess styrofoam pieces. Once you have all the styrofoam pieces out and you can clearly see the base, You'll want to go ahead and begin to unwrap it while it's in the box. The first thing you'll do is remove the battery box. There's a handle on the top. Simply lift up and put it to the side. Next, you'll want to go ahead and continue unwrapping the base as much as possible so that the plastic wraps out of the way. Then grab that lever, pull up on the seat post, lift the foot plates up, and just lift the front half out. Very easy. Again, there's a lever you have to pull and it'll just come right apart. Then you can grab the back end, which is pretty lightweight. It weighs 36 pounds to be exact. So once you have the, all four pieces apart, it, it's pretty manageable. Anyway, we're gonna put it together now. You're gonna notice two green indicators on the back side and two on the front side. The hooks need to line up with the bar. Those hooks are gonna rest right on the bar and the unit's gonna to click together. You're gonna to hear it click and that means that it's in place. The next thing you'll want to do is grab the seat post. The seat post is going to be the part that actually holds the seat onto the base. There's a securement pin at the bottom with two securement pin slots which allow you to raise or lower the seat height by an inch. You'll need to slide the seat post into the seat post sleeve, line up the holes, and make sure that you find the hole that you want to use. If you want the seat to be a little bit higher, you use the lower hole. If you want the seat to be an inch lower, you use the higher hole out of the two that are located on the seat post. Simply slide that seat post pin in all the way, and you're good to go. After you put the seat post on, you can put the battery box in. It simply falls into place. There's no tools or levers or buttons. It just falls right into place. After you have the battery in, you can start unwrapping the seat. There is a wrapper on the top part of the seat back and the bottom. You'll notice at the bottom of the seat, you'll have two storage containers, which you can open up. They open outwards. You will have to lift up a little bit while pulling outwards to open them. And you'll notice that in the middle behind the lever to rotate the seat, there's a seat post. That is the male connector, the male connector, which is going to slide into the reciprocating end there on the seat post. That seat post just falls right in there. Just line it up and it's going to fall right into place. You will need to have the under storage compartments open in order for that to work. To verify that the seat is locked into place, lift the rotation knob and you're going to hear that click. The seat lever will click, indicating that it's locking into position. The next step is to get the armrest. Simply take the plastic wrapping off of the armrest. There's going to be two pieces for the left and the right side. Start with the elbow, that's the first piece. The elbow is going to slide into place. You're going to loosen the adjustment knobs so that you can slide them in. There are two set point holes for the securement pin for each armrest. This allows you to control the width in between each armrest. So if you want a wider distance between the armrests, you can choose the position that's going to allow it to open up wider. Or if you want to bring the armrests in, you can bring them in a bit. The 
top part, which is the flip up armrest, slides right into the elbow. And we're going to show you how to secure that next. But first, we're going to secure the other elbow here and just drop in the armrest again. Just line up the holes, very similar to how you did with the seat post. Stick that securement pin in, tighten the knob, the tension adjustment knob, no tools are necessary. Slide in the flip up armrest. Make sure that when you tighten the uh, armrest, flip up armrest in, there's enough room for them to flip up and down. Now, in order to tighten those armrests, you're gonna need an Allen key, which you're gonna see is in the user manual bag. There's a bag inside of the user manual bag, which contains the Allen key that's needed to tighten and secure the armrests, the flip up armrests. And as mentioned before, you wanna make sure that the armrest has enough height to flip up and down. If you let it fall all the way in and all the way into the lowest position and then tighten it, the armrests aren't going to be able to flip up. So leave a little bit of room so that the flip up feature is not obstructed in any way. And just rinse and repeat for the other side. If you started with the right, we're moving on to the left. Like, in, like you see here, you can follow along. Again, leave about an inch of room, about maybe three quarters of an inch, just so that it, it allows the armrest to flip up and down freely. You don't have to over tighten it, just tighten it enough, keep it nice and snug. We're going to show you the freewheel levers. The unit will not move around. It's always locked. The brakes are always engaged. This is a safety feature. But if you switch, hit those yellow levers, it will go into freewheel mode. You can't operate the wheelchair with batteries or with the motor when it's in freewheel mode. Now, the joystick is very easy to install. Simply slide it into the right or left side. And there is another uh, set screw, which you can use the same Allen key that you use to tighten the armrests. You simply put the joystick in the desired position, begin to tighten it. Once it's semi-snug, kind of make sure you rotate it and get it into the perfect position and then tighten it some more until it's really snug. It's very easy to install. No other tools other than the Allen key are necessary for this uh, installation or setup process. The next thing we're gonna do is secure the wire to the armrest. There are holes drilled into the frame of the armrest and the zip ties are provided in the user manual bag. So just follow along with Andrew here. He's using the zip ties and sticking them through the drilled holes that are a part of the armrest frame and securing the wire so that it's not just loosely flapping about and potentially gonna get snagged on something as you're riding around. Once you've put the uh, zip ties through, you can tighten them up all the way and then maybe just use a pair of scissors to cut the excess part of the zip tie off to make it look clean. Now, as you move your way down to the bottom part of the armrest or the elbow, you'll want to make sure that it, the wire is not so tight that it restricts the armrest from moving up or down freely. Give it a little bit of room. You'll also want to, at this point, connect the joystick cable harness. It's a connector that you would want to fish up through the handle in the rear of the wheelchair and that's going to keep it out of the way of the base and the free wheel, uh, I'm sorry, in the uh, rear wheels so that it doesn't get caught up. Simply connect that joystick connector. There's really no wrong way to do it. Just look out for the tab on the top of one side and there's a little indent on the receiving end for that tab. Once it's connected, go ahead and begin to create that little bit of extra space for the armrest to freely go up and down. Don't make it too tight there in that corner. And Andrew's showing you here that, you know, he's leaving a bunch of excess wire there, not so much that it's able to get snagged on anything, but enough for that armrest to flip up and down freely without being obstructed. So you can put one zip tie towards the top of the elbow and then another one at the actual turning point of the elbow. And then maybe one or two more towards the bottom part of the railing where the tension adjustment knobs are just to keep that wire free and not potentially able to snag something as you're driving along. You do want to have it a little bit loose so that you can rotate the seat. Uh, you can actually rotate this seat, but if those wires are too tight, it won't allow you to rotate the seat, obviously. So just find a position that it can naturally just be able to rotate without being obstructed. We're going to show you now how to install the colored panels. Depending on what color you chose, 
Uh, you may have received the white, blue, red. There are several color options. The panels come in a separate box. They are wrapped up pretty well. As you can see, there's about six panels, which you'll have to unwrap individually. In this example, one of our customers ordered the white colored panels and we're installing the white covered, uh, colored shroud panels. So go ahead and unwrap them all. Try not to scratch them. There are two little ones that go over the wheel caps on the front wheels. They snap right into place. There's an additional set of two big panels that go over the battery box. There's a little bit of Velcro on the back and a little hook for the front. It's very easy. Just put the tab in first so that it hooks in and then press down so that the Velcro attaches itself to the other end where the receiving Velcro is. Repeat for the left and the right side on the battery box. And then you have two more, same concept. It has a little tab in the front and some Velcro in the back. Slide in the tab first, push down firmly on the part in the back that has the Velcro for the right and left side. And just like that, your panels are inserted and installed. The charger is very easy to use. You do need to charge the unit overnight when you first get it to train the batteries so that they last a long time. So go ahead and take the battery, uh, battery charger out of the box. It's an XLR charger. You do need to connect the power box to the wall outlet cord and then simply plug that into a household receptacle or an extension cord. The other end uses a barrel connector known as an XLR connector. It has three pins on the connector and the receiving end for the wheelchair to, to get plugged in is going to have three holes so just line up those holes with the pins and simply connect it it just goes in until it's snug now the lights on the charger will be red when it's fully charged one will turn green all in all this is one of our favorite travel power wheelchairs the seat rotates there are storage containers you get free shipping and tax-free sales when you purchase at mobilityscootersdirect.com thank you for watching and have a great day.